Hello my dear friends. Today we are going to learn about Robert Frost. Robert Lee Frost was an American poet. He was born on 26th March 1874 in San Francisco, California, United States. When we talk about awards, he had received Pulitzer Prize for Poetry in 1943, United States Poet Laureate in 1958, Bollingen Prize in 1963. He died on 29th January 1963 in Boston, Massachusetts. The famous lines, miles to go before I sleep, miles to go before I sleep. This phrase appears in the two last lines of Robert Frost's simple poem, Stopping by the Woods on a Snowy Evening. The speaker in the poem repeatedly utters it in the fourth stanza of the poem, indicating that the phrase is very important. The speaker says, but I have promises to keep and miles to go before I sleep and miles to go before I sleep. The poet intends this phrase to have literal meanings by stating that the speaker is traveling and needs to cover some distance before getting back home. The speaker is away from his home where he feels that he needs to repeat this fact to himself that he has miles to reach home. However, symbolically, the word sleep suggests death and darkness. Hence, this line refers to a long journey ahead before the speaker could go to eternal sleep of death or it simply purposes that the speaker has many responsibilities to fulfill before sleeping or dying. This phrase is used in almost every walk of life including literature, business, politics and everyday life. For instance, an old man can say this to his children to show that he has much more to do for them before he dies. A businessman can allude to his business and his workers that he has to do much to give them some bonus. A military strategist can allude this to his troops to urge them to complete the mission before they could sleep. This is very famous phrase used by Robert Frost. In the line 15 and 16, this phrase points towards the realization of speaker regarding his duties and responsibilities to fulfill before his death. The traveler in this poem enters into a remote area where weather is soothing, the scenery is bewitching, making him want to stay for a while. However, the speaker needs to continue this journey to fulfill his promises. Here we find implementation of metaphor, literary device or rhetoric device metaphor. Miles to go is metaphor for continuing journey of life and sleep is metaphor for death. Here we find tone of the poet calm, dreamy and soothing. Let's move towards another poetry and this poetry is extremely famous. Not only that, this poetry we can relate in each and every sphere of our life. The poem is The Road Not Taken. This poem was written by Robert Frost and was published in 1961. As the first poem in the collection, Mountain Interval. The poem having a perfect rhyme scheme, A, B, A, A, B, 
is an ambiguous poem that allows the reader to think about choices they make in life. Robert Frost wrote this poem for his friend Edward Thomas as a joke. Please remember his name. He considers it a very tricky poem. The road not taken as nostalgic commentary on life choices. This poem is about life from the perspective of a young narrator who decides to seize the day and, as an individual, chooses the road less travelled by. The expression of doubt runs in the poem from the first line until the last. The expression of uncertainty about choices and our natural tendency to surmise about consequences we may have to face marks the central theme of the poem. However, what stays in the mind what stays in the mind of the people is the philosophy of life and the dilemma of making choices. There are many metaphors in the poem like road, fork in road, in the fork in the road and yellow woods. The road in the poem is the metaphor for life while the fork on the road metaphorically represents the choices we make to determine the courses of our lives. Similarly, yellow woods are the metaphor of making decisions during the hard times of a person's life. These metaphors used in this poem emphasize the importance of different decisions we make in different situations and their impact on our lives. Imagery is used to make the readers feel things through their five senses. The poet has used images of the senses of sights such as leaves, yellow woods and these images help readers to actually perceive things they are reading. The image of the road helps readers to visualize the road providing a navigation route to the travelers. A simile is a device used to compare things with familiar things to let the readers know it easily and here it is used. Assonance is used as well. Though as far that the passing and in somewhere ages and ages again, ages hence. Let's focus on the highlights of the poem. In the poem, there are four stanzas with, with each stanza having five verses or lines. A quantain is a five-lined stanza borrowed from medieval French poetry. Each stanza is a quantain such as the first one or the second one. The whole poem follows the whole poem follows a b a a b rhyme scheme there are four beats per line employing iambic ten, iambic tetrameter the rhymes in the road not taken are end rhymes which are also perfect rhymes trochi means there is a one stressed and un one unstressed syllable in a line such as two roads diversed in a yellow woods. Anapests means there are two short or unstressed syllables followed by one long or stressed syllable. Mending walls. Mending walls 
written by Robert Frost, a great American poet, is a thought-provoking poem about human limitations and their benefits in the society. It was published in 1914. The poem is about two neighbors who meet in spring every year to mend the stone wall that separates their farm. It illustrates how fences make good neighbors and how we can maintain long-lasting relations with neighbors by establishing such walls. Since its publication, it has gained immense popularity across the globe on account of its simple yet profound subject. The poem is about the activity of mending a wall that the speaker and his neighbor perform every year in spring. The narrator of the poem feels that there is no need for any boundary as neither of them has anything precious to keep in lawns. They have just trees. To him, mending the wall is a purposeless activity. He also observes the falling of stones from the wall and comments that even nature is not in favor of this fence. However, this neighbor, his neighbor, being attached to his traditions, attempt to rationalize. He asserts that boundaries and distances are essential for relationship to work. However, what enchants the reader is the message he conveys that most relationships can work well with boundaries. Let's go through the highlights of the poem. This is a long narrative poem written in one stanza with no break. It is a type of meter comprising five iams. This poem comprises iambic pentameter such as something there is that does not love. A blank verse is written with regular meter but unrhymed lines almost always in iambic pentameter. Mending walls is written in blank verse. There is a repetition of phrase good fences make good neighbors. It has created a musical quality in the poem. The lines repeated at the same distance in the poem are called refrain. The phrase good fences make good neighbors is repeated with the same words. It has become a refrain as it is repeated twice in the poem. Let's move towards another poetry, Acquainted with the Light. This poem was written by Robert Frost, of course, an American poet. It was first published in 1928 in West Running Brook. The poem comprises the narrator's experience with depression, an ordinary idea of isolation and his nocturnal strolls or night strolls. It also explains how separation cuts people of society. However, the popularity of the poem lies in the fact that it deals with the phenomenon of insurmountable depression and anxiety. As this poem is about isolation, the lonely speaker walks the city street at night trying to escape from his anxiety and unexpressed fear unexpressed fear. He also tries to find something to comfort him but fails. He listens to the sound of that city but soon acknowledges that these cries are not for him. Also, he passes by a watchman but avoids eye contact as if he hesitates to express himself to somebody. 
Finally, he gazes up at the moon and says, Time has no meaning for him. He is wrapped in never-ending sorrow. What enchants the reader is the way he brings into light the natural world and human feelings. Let's talk about literary devices as well. The poet has used visual imagery in the poem such as I have walked out in rain and back in rain. 1. Luminary clock against the sky and came over houses from another street to describe the weather and anxiety of the speaker. Alliteration Stood, still, stopped. I have stood still and stopped the sound of feet. Symbolism Luminary clock is a symbol of time. Night symbolizes darkness. Speaker's depression or speaker's depression and moon symbolizes hope. Frost has repeated the word rain in the second line of the poem to emphasize his point. Assonance I have walked out in rain and back in rain. Assonance we find here. Assonance is repetition of consonant sound. Assonance is, com assonance is repetition of vowel sound, which we find here. Therein, there is an extended metaphor where the speaker's loneliness and isolation are compared with night. Next is enjoy. Enjambment. I have passed by the watchman on his beat and dropped my eyes, unwilling to explain. Anaphora. Frost has repeated the word rain in the second line of the poem to emphasize the point. Let's focus on important points of the poetry. A sonnet consists of 14 lines made up of three quatrains and a rhymic couplet. Terja Rima is a three-lined stanza borrowed from Italian poetry. There are four three-lined stanzas in the poem. There are two consecutive lines in a couplet, usually in same meter and joined by rhyme. This sonnet ends with a couplet, which generally reveals the central idea of the poem, such as, Proclaimed the time was neither wrong nor right. I have been one acquainted with the night. The rhyme scheme followed by the entire poem is A B A C D C D A D A A. This is a type of meter consisting of five iams. This poem comprises iambic pentameter such as I have been one acquainted with the night. There is a repetition of the line, I have been one acquainted with the night, which has created a musical quality in the poem. Refrain The lines that are repeated for some distance at some distance in the poem are called refrain. The line I have been one acquainted with the night is repeated with the same words. Hence, it has become a refrain. It has been repeated in the first and the last stanza. Next poetry is Home Burial. 
Home Burial is a famous dramatic narrative about the personal loss of a family and its impact on their domestic affairs, written by Robert Frost, a famous American poet. It was first published in 1930. The poem comprises grief and trauma of a mother over the death of her son. It also illustrates how this incident has shaken her marital relationship. The popularity of the poem, however, lies in the presentation of a true emotion, emotional response of a mother. The poem presents grim picture of the family after losing their only son. The mother is distraught when she sees her son's grave. The memory of that heart-wrenching incident disturbs her and her husband fails to understand the reason of her stress. Her husband's ignorance incites a tense conversation between them. She dislikes hisness, obliviousness and desires to leave the house. He begs her to express the reason for her indifferent behavior, but she does not and remains inconsolable. She escapes from the suffocating air of the house, which continually reminds her of their son's death. She leaves her home while the husband promises to bring her back using force and they remain in this conflict. Let's talk about the important points from the poetry. There are eight long stanzas in the poem. This poem is written in a blank verse form. There is a repetition of the line, What is it you see? And like that, like that, which has created a musical quality in the poem. The lines that are repeated at some distance in the poem are called refrains. The line, what is it you see, is repeated with the same words. It has become a refrain as it has been repeated thrice in the first stanza. Friends, for today we are going to keep our video till here. We will continue with some other poetry and some other poet in our next video. Friends, we will keep our video till here. I hope it was knowledgeable and resourceful for you all. We will come with other such videos tomorrow as well at 7.30 p.m. Be with us for the preparation of NET, KVS and other important examinations. All the best my friends. See you.